This week's focus is actually on both teams, uh, looking at the game over the weekend between All In 17U Adidas Gold against Greater Purpose Athletics at uh, 17U level. Uh, both Illinois teams, both local teams, uh, both kind of did different things really well throughout the game. So this week is kind of going to be looking at kind of different strategies, different ways of attack for both teams in this game. So this game ended up with uh, Cam Ceres hitting a buzzer beater at the very end, but we'll look at uh, two or three different segments of the game and kind of break down uh, what both teams did. So one thing to look at offensively for GPA they do a ton of weave action and dribble drive stuff to really clear things out for the many guards they have that can attack. Uh, Cam Cerise, Malachi Johnson, uh, Rakim Chaney really lead the way for them. Uh, but they really have a lot of guys that can really get things going at the rim. So they're that solid one-on-one defense from uh, Jack Dabbs and All In. That's a tough take. Brendan Watson, uh, Evanson guard, had a really good game against All In. Uh, they just have so many weapons for GPA, different guys that can get to the rim, different guys that can create in space. And this All In team has a lot of, I would consider, very plus defenders. I think Sam Lappin's a very uh, productive, consistent on ball defender, really gets up in guys. Jack Dabbs has good length. Uh, Morgan Brown is also a really good, versatile wing defender. Here's a little horns action for all in. It's a deep three for Marta. Shot that he can make. Uh, worth noting, so this game all in was without uh, Connor Wooden, who I would consider probably one of the uh, better, maybe underrated shooters in the 2024 class. Uh, so definitely was missed with his ability to knock down threes. Usually good for, you know, two to four threes a game. So defensively, in this game, GPA gave up a good amount of size here. Uh, Marcus Everhart is really the only, I would consider, kind of true post presence for GPA. Uh, Mitch Humphrey does have length, but he's a little bit more of a guard wing. So there was a lot of different stuff and strategy that was needed, kind of on both ends, to attack the mismatches uh, on both ends of the court. Here's a little pick-and-pop action. It's a good job jumping that behind the back. And Watson, that's a good dump off pass there. So, you know, here defensively, one of the best times as a off-ball defender to go try to get a steal like this is on spin moves behind the back so you can time up the motion. Here it looks like Dabs loses it a little bit, but uh, Watson really does a good job of anticipating in general. Able to get on the break here, and then that's just an easy two-on-one to get a layup. So this game was very back and forth. Uh, we'll go through a couple different stretches of uh, for kind of both teams going on runs. It's a good and one there for uh, Sam Lappin. Don't really see him go down in the post a lot. Uh, this was a scenario where he kind of had a similar height matchup here. It's good footwork. Good job going through the swipe there. And there from, you know, Watson's perspective, that may be a situation because it is a player who is a similar height where actually walling up may work. I know in both Lappin and Watson's case, that's probably not uh, a typical style of interior defense there. But, uh, you know, the reach in there kind of gave Lappin that lane to get that and one. All right, so matchup-wise, what I thought was interesting was the uh, way that All In with their length kind of decided to match up, and they kind of switched things up throughout the game. But I thought putting dabs on Cam Cerise, who is one of the better kind of scorers that GPA has and really, you know, in the class is a very gifted uh, creator with the ball. Dabs is about 6'6", 6'7", very mobile, agile laterally. 
uh, anticipates well. And he really worked hard this game um, to contest stuff with Cerise to try to make things difficult and use his length as much as possible. I mean, on defense, I'm not even that mad there. All I would want is a contest. I'm Cerise there. That's a tough shot. But again, you know, you see certain players and, you know, when you work on stuff enough, it's not even a shot that you would consider difficult because I know this is definitely a shot that Cam's used to practice. You know, that's a, that's a college-level pull-up going left or right off the dribble against length, against really good size. You're not going to see a lot of six, 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 seven wings um, that really are able to guard there. Then right back off of that, taking a charge here. A little bit of, uh, maybe a little bit of embellishment here, but I mean, he's in position. He's going to push off a little bit. I don't know if he's getting an Oscar for that one, but he's at least going to get a nomination. Uh, but again, it's good position defense. Cam Cerise is another guy. You know, we talked about some of the defenders all in has. Cam Cerise really gets up and guards guys. He is committed to guarding whoever he needs to. I think we'll see at a certain point in this kind of how he fights when he gets down to the post as well on defense. Kind of a tough shot there from uh, Cheney. He had a, a really, really good tournament. Uh, another really good shot maker for GPA uh, out of Auburn. It's a nice little pull up there. So good patience, good pace. You know, I think earlier in the spring, I would say I would look at Sam Lappin a little bit more as a... Uh, Kind of floor general, pass first type guy, not really looking to get a shot unless he's wide open. I think the last couple of weeks, he's really looked good as an aggressive, kind of getting to the teeth of the defense, have his hands and feet ready for shots behind the three-point line. And again, that's a matchup there where he's not really having to deal with some of the length that he does occasionally have to see at that point guard spot. That's a great move. Yeah, that's, you know, footwork, I would say, above all else. Obviously, there's a lot of different skills you can have on offense. I think Cam Cerise's footwork is really the one separate for him. Everything is under control. The reason why he can handle the ball like he can is because of the way that he keeps his feet active and kind of the understanding of angles. It's a good shot fake. Really nice up and under. He gets dabs a little bit longer off the ground. Uh, and again, watch kind of the angles that he takes even on this initial drive. And the reason why I think this is a kind of next level move, right? So he sets it up. He attacks open space. Obviously, we see we got a little bit of a gap here around the uh, free throw line and elbow area. This is only working if you are a player to me who can make this shot. So throughout this game, uh, Cam had had a couple of kind of turnarounds off the same action. One of his kind of favorite moves here is the spin back kind of fall away over that opposite shoulder. So he fakes that. Always got to have counters. Great shot. Fake. I mean, that's a very believable. He gets the ball lifted up with that. That gets dabs off his feet. And then, again, just a clean step through there. All right, so that's kind of the first piece of the game we're going to look at second piece so we're still looking at um a tight game here it was kind of back and forth the whole time this is the uh kind of beginning portions of the second half so at this point uh really both ways honestly it was a game where there was a lot of offensive production that occurred i wouldn't say there was necessarily bad defense but both teams definitely had guys that could go get shots in different ways. So I like that action there. Defensively, I, I think, you know, when you give up size like this, you need guys who are willing to communicate and get up. I think for GPA, Marcus Everhart really is a anchor for them because he can switch out and guard some quicker guys, and he is always that backline protection. Here on that little... Diagonal screen. Cam Cerise does a really good job bumping Cam Lathos, who, you know, he had a really good game. He's just had a really good spring. Uh, should be a really highly coveted D3 player. 
And then you see here, go back a little bit. After that bump, if we were going to do a defensive drill to basically go over how you need to bump cutters and get back to your man, this is really it to a T. All right, so he's physical here. Everhart does a good job of kind of splitting distance, doesn't completely give it up, so he could help if he needed to. And then Cerise gets back and close it out. This GPA team really does a nice job of closing out for the most part. They're active. They have a lot of guys who are willing to get tight and kind of force you to put it on the ground. Another good closeout. The shot Lappin can hit. And again, I, I like seeing him be aggressive as well, uh, shooting the basketball. So they're kind of getting stuff set up. Again, they love the dribble handoffs, love the weaves, especially when guys are getting the ball out in space so they can get ahead of steam. Little elevator play. Uh, a lot of teams have really gotten beat with that, especially with Mitch Humphrey's com Humphrey coming off of it. And then again, we see more guys attacking off a handoff. So for GPA, this is a really good source of offense. So here you see Brown. That's a really good job fighting through the screen to get on a really good shooter here. But watch on this handoff. We're going to see Malachi Johnson do a good job here of attacking back. So here this is a situation where he could attack uh, Lathos kind of going right hand. Everhart does a good job of setting a solid screen. So then when Martin, Mar, uh, Marta, apologies, gets back in the play, they're going to get a downhill drive here. Malachi Johnson is going to finish with that left hand. And this team's in attack mode all the time. So as good of a defensive team as All In is, uh, there was so many guys on GPA who were willing and capable of attacking that it makes it difficult even on a team that has the defensive versatility that this All In group has. So Everhart, good defense there. Lathos, you always got to be afraid of his ability to hit mid-range shots, hit anything from the perimeter, good post score. It's a nice kick out. And I mean, if you just watch, you know, I don't think he necessarily does anything that's flashy, but uh, Cam Lathos, to me, he had a really good high school season. I thought he had a pretty good season as a sophomore as well for Conant. Uh, he just really is a super efficient, uh, gets to his spots, doesn't really waste a lot of movement type of player. He's got really good size, probably 205, 210. It's a really good looking stroke, good follow through. Uh, again, I, I'm very confident he's going to get a ton of high level Division three interest. Um, and he definitely is a kid that has his best basketball ahead of him. So a little bit more of that weave action for GPA. Tried to clear that out. You know, that short, th this to me is one of the areas where, you know, Cam Cerise, I think he averaged 22 or 23 uh, with Lake Park this year. You know, you don't just magically average that. There's not a lot of guards who really have a polished kind of mid-post game. I mean, this is a 6'3 point guard who knows, understands how to get into Barclays. So that's just a really good Barkley post up. Got the height advantage, so instead of trying to do some stuff off the dribble against a really good on-ball defender in Lappin. He gets him to the post. Gets a solid turnaround there. Then Lappin, look at that full court. Just coast to coast off of this. So not a bad contest. Look how quick he gets his ball up. Now if you're a GPA, you got to try to stop the basketball before this. Uh, they're at a little bit of a disadvantage. Therese is kind of out of the picture. Um, so there, it is kind of kind of a uh, disadvantage situation. Basketball needs to be stopped here. But from Lappin's perspective, that's how you push pace right gets an advantage and then does a great job of negating a very good shot blocker and everhart gets into his body then finishes that one that's a difficult finish again he didn't have a foul called or anything it wasn't as much contact but he did a good job of making sure that a shot blocker couldn't come up and contest that shot more spacing here that's a good driving kick really good extra pass Good closeouts, too, on all ends point. Okay, so let's go back a couple because I do think those were good uh, closeouts and rotations to get to this point. If you notice, uh, right now at this point, Dabs is out here on uh, Cheney. You see Lappin's on Cerise. Again, in that first half, Dabs was pretty much exclusively on Cerise. Good downhill drive. 
good help by Dabs. So, see, Mitch Humphrey's going to be spacing out. Really good shooter. Good extra pass. Lappin did a good job helping. Here, this is good IQ here by Cerise. Right? He's going to clear things out. Now, this is a, you know, really you could go two ways with this. Off this catch, looking at where we have our help for all in, right? So we got Dabs is kind of out of bounds. Marta's kind of on that uh, left block. Brown's kind of in the corner. Off of this catch from Cerise, he actually could have gotten directly downhill and attacked those right away. So I think if he catches that and he rips hard, he may be able to draw help here. It's not really Everhart's game to shoot kind of a 25-footer, but could have maybe created an early advantage. Nevertheless, good recognition that he has a mismatch here. Now, you may say, I don't know if that's a great shot. Um, I think it's it was a little too predetermined, meaning I feel as though he kind of got into this crossover thinking... I'm taking my one dribble, kind of pull up off of that cross. Um, but this is a shot, again, when you get an isolation on a mismatch, you want to get to your spots. That elbow is Cam's spot. So, um, you know, good contest by Lathos. If I'm Lathos, I'm thinking that's a win for me. Um, Cam probably could have gotten a little bit more downhill there. Stabs get into the basket. And then Lathos on the glass. So I like this early attack. I think when you got a guy who's kind of as lanky and rangy as Dabs is, you know, that ball handling ability is a big plus. Zeke is going downhill. And sometimes it's not even about what you can do on a make standpoint there. Like Dabs' ability to get to the basket, that opened up the entire offensive glass. Because of his ability to go early, they couldn't kind of switch to their regular matchups. You see Cerise is still on Lathos from that other side of the floor. So what that did, when Dad went to go, now we got, again, 205, 210 here. A good offensive rebounder, good hands. Lathos is just getting on that, and then he gets a putback. All right, so we see they're moving a little bit. Uh, one, one thing that I think is very notable in GPA's offense, there's a ton of space and a ton of driving lanes built into the offense. So if you notice here, it's five out, and it is a wide five out. So if you there's not really anybody in the paint right now defensively. I think Brown could be a little bit more on the help side. But again, personnel-wise, there's also a lot of guys that can shoot it off of the catch. And, you know, there's a lot of different opportunities for them to get drives kickouts like this i mean that's just a difficult shot for malachi johnson um and he was you know he was a catalyst for them as well this weekend i think him and cerise kind of for the majority of the games you know played a huge role there's a lot of balance with what they have i thought uh, rakeem cheney was kind of a big presence for them as well this weekend but look at all this space right so because Cerise here gets a hard backdoor cut, if you notice he's actually covered, what that cut does, right? And this is why cutting off the basketball is so important, especially when you're timing it up. Look at Marta, who is supposed to be guarding Malachi Johnson here. He sees the cut as well. So go back a little bit. Watch how Cam Cerise's cut draws Julian Marta to take him and how that opens up Malachi Johnson's cut to the corner. Still a difficult shot in the corner, but a lot more open because it's a much longer closeout. So look, they sprint out here. Now that's a that's a really long closeout for Marta. And then not really a hand up there to stop him from getting that shot off. A good pass from Everhart cross court. But that's kind of what that opening of the middle does for GPA. It kind of allows for those cuts, those drives, and then the guys that can really hit those outside shots get a lot more open ones in those scenarios. Here we're going to see high ball screen. They did a good amount of this throughout the game. I know we haven't seen a lot of it during this breakout breakdown, but especially with Lathos as the screener, because he is such a good pick and pop and pick and roll threat, 
any switch that occurred was basically a uh, win for all in throughout this game because of his ability to do, do different things. Going to see Brown there kicks it out. They get Lathos the ball in a decent spot. I like that double team. Right, and that's a good block. They're going to be off and running. Here, again, the way that Lathos have been playing kind of in the low post, mid post area, they kind of had to double. I think Everhart's a really good defender. It's not that he necessarily needed the help, but, you know, there's not a ton you can do in terms of contesting his shot with how high the release is. So good job by Malachi Johnson to not only go stunt there, but then this is a great closeout. I mean, look, he's getting right up to the ball, gets a hand on it. The uh, baller TV screen didn't scroll all the way over there, but uh, missed a corner three on that one. Man, that's a tough shot. Again, I know I said it before in this, but um, Sam Lappin, especially with uh, Connor Wooden's absence uh, this weekend, I mean, him being this aggressive really did a lot of good things for them. That is not an easy shot. Um, that's like a free throw line kind of push shot, middle of the lane. All right, so now we see, again, talking about that space. Here, Lathos is in a really good position. Uh, you can see Brown get over a little bit more, but that, that's a really good shooter in the corner. That's good defense. Like I said, I think, I think Jack Dabbs is really a jack-of-all-trades type of wing. I think he's going to have a great season um, with Stevenson. Uh, not just in the regular season, but I think in June, I think if coaches really get a chance to see him, I mean, he moves his feet well, very, very long. Like he has high level college length. Um, he can really guard. He really commits to it as well. It's another nice pull up. Again, just really confident, really good pace here, getting the ball up the court. Again, if you don't stop it, this is kind of what you want from every players if they're not going to stop the basketball you keep going nice little under control pull up there was nothing rushed about that uh, wasn't out of control just putting his head down you know he took kind of that wide open shot in rhythm that he could get in transition especially at a player his size being able to make some of those kind of 10 to 15 foot runners floaters little pull-ups is really going to be crucial for his ability to produce especially at the college level that's a good pocket pass uh, Everhart is a high flyer here, so Malachi Johnson, I like this pass, right on time, leads him, doesn't put it behind him, lets him catch it in stride, and then give your big guy a chance to go make a play up above the rim. Doesn't make this one. We're going to see Lappin takes that to the rim, they're going to get a timeout called. So this was a big run for all in, uh, really stemmed from their ability to push the basketball. So we've already seen in the last three or four possessions. I mean, the ball is popping for all in right now. They get it in transition. Guys are gone. Marta actually had a layup down here as well. But another good take by Sam Lappin kind of getting to the basket to finish on that. And then kind of forced to get a timeout. So kind of this last section of uh, breakdown that we're going to look at will be kind of the back end portion of the game. So, uh, you know, the, the game, like I said, we're not going to go all the way to the end, but uh, this is another kind of section where there was a lot of kind of good things matchup wise from a offensive and defensive perspective. So here we see the ball popping around. Let's look at this away screen defense right here. So Lathos is going to kick it out. Gonna see a little of a curl screen here, just a way screen, very quick action to get the basketball to Brown coming off of this. Watch Everhart here. He's gonna disengage for a second to kind of extend out this curl, so he's not gonna get it at the rim. And then we're gonna see Cerise get right back in the play. I would say Everhart probably stayed a little too long. Probably has to be a little bit better communication between uh, Cam and Marcus in that scenario. Since Lathos, a really good mid-range shooter, is going to be open on this. But, you know, 
They're going to get that pull-up jump shot there. There for Brown, if he kicks that to Lathos, that's kind of a rhythm jump shot for him. Uh, so not a bad shot, but definitely one they could potentially get a more open one from. We're going to see another kind of set here for all in. They're going to go horns. Nice little curl screen. Maybe had him on that, but... Uh, and again, that's... You know, even in just what we've seen, and this is obviously not the entire game. This is really a total of probably, you know, five to seven minutes of actual gameplay. Uh, this is just efficient, right? Getting played tight. Brandon Watson is a very good defender. But this is just, you know, good jab step. Let me get to my spot. And then I'm just getting up. I'm lifting up. You're going to have to come up and block this shot. Again, very, very assertive in this game uh, throughout. Here again, I, you know, we talked about the matchups earlier. So it started with dabs on Cerise. Then we saw Lappin was on him for a good portion. And now throughout the rest of the game, so kind of this back half of the game, Brown was on him, uh, kind of trying to slow him down to an extent. So always good from a coaching perspective to switch up looks on players that are kind of that offensively talented. A little bit of a tough shot there for Cheney, but again, he had hit a couple of those early on in the game as well. It's lapping again. Nice little scoop layup off that. Got to be able to make plays off broken plays. So again, we see the same five out space. Another handoff. It's a good drive. All right, and again, Every one of these doesn't have to be complex here. This is just two dribble handoffs. Good right-handed driver getting to a strong hand. You know, Brown went underneath it, so he did give him a little bit of cushion here. But when you have a player that is this good at attacking angles, this is what I talked about early on when we were looking at the first half film. The footwork is very, very important when you're looking at what Cam Cerise brings. He gets low. You see he gets that first step, right? Okay, he created that advantage because of how low he got. Now on that second step, you're going to see him extend basically out and around, and then he's going to use his length to kind of get that um, up to the basket quickly. So you're going to see him extend out here. Brown is about 6'5", good athlete, but because of the angle he got, now he's not going to be able to contest kind of from a balanced position. That allowed him to go get that layup. All right, so we get another step up here. Good help. It's a pretty good shot contest there on that transition three. Now, I would say that, I guess, given the shot that they had just taken, right, you do obviously want to be confident in this setting, but... So here, this is another, and I think we saw this with earlier when uh, Cam got the switch out on uh, Lathos, kind of seemed a little bit predetermined, meaning that as he's dribbling this ball up, it was just a matter of, let me get to my room and get to the pull up. He's so good off of hesitations, it would almost be better for him to keep that hang dribble alive a little bit more. As he sees the defender step up, now I can attack this gap. I either get a two-on-one or I can get downhill and finish myself. But again, not a bad shot. Um, a shot he can make. Here, again, you know, similar to Cerise's shot, can probably get a better one. And just given the fact that they did just, you know, kind of take an early three off that, you know, keep probing off of that. Especially if you're going to get this switch. So if he attacks a little bit more, you can force Dabs to step over and then you're going to have Cam Cerise in the corner. If not, Everhart is a vertical threat, so you can throw it up to the rim, hit him with an early pocket pass here. Uh, a lot of different options. This is probably, uh, again, that's a win for all in. Good job by Sam Lappin getting back in the play there. But, uh, you know, that's kind of a space where you would want to uh, be a little bit more patient, I guess, given kind of what the score was. And, again, this is play. 
couple possession game at this point. All right, so typical AAU tournament. Someone thought they heard a whistle, which is standard. So we see the switch again. So, again, I think when you guys break down film, I think it's always very important that you look at the in-game adjustments that players make. I think a lot of times people look a lot at the coaches and what game plans they change and the adjustments they make. Players throughout the game you know, you have to be able to learn how they're being defended, figure out what's working, what's not working, uh, and make those adjustments on the fly as well, right? And I think this is a great opportunity to see that. We saw the first time he had this mismatch. Uh, he went to the elbow, kind of predetermined that pull-up jump shot. We'll see what he does here. Love that. Again, you getting a mismatch isn't just about you getting a shot. It's about you creating the advantage. That's why it, it's like any other sport, you create a mismatch, that's the purpose of it, right? So here, could he shoot this pull-up jump shot? Of course, right? He's going to drive, put so much pressure on the defense, they don't have a choice but to help over. Now, defensively, ball side corner, you don't want to leave, but this is a scenario where if you don't, it's going to be a layup. So he commits, really good kick out. Malachi Johnson doesn't hit that, but that is a great shot on his end. And if you're uh, Cerise, that is really all you can ask for is to get a guy a wide open shot after you create that mismatch. Nice. That's a good drive. Yeah, I think we talked about this earlier. Very long stride. Like, look how many it's taken, what, a couple dribbles? Two dribbles and one was really a setup. And then he's not getting a shot blocked around the rim either because he has the ability to kind of wrap around guys with his long arms. So we'll skip past these free throws. More space. All right, we see dribble handoff action again. Much better defense there. Uh, Cheney knew that one was off when he shot it, but again... I think part of what makes this GPA team good, and I know there's been a couple shots where you might look and say, yeah, I don't know if that's a great shot. Maybe not, but there is a value that has to be put on kids having the confidence to take shots, right? I think a lot of times in AAU, there are kids who get so stuck in roles, and this happens in high school too, um, that they don't have the confidence to take the good ones. So every now and then, if you have a player who has that confidence, who you have that confidence in, they take a couple shots that are like, ah, you know, maybe questionable. You're going to live with that, right, generally speaking, especially when they're giving you that energy uh, throughout the game. So here, it's kind of a tough shot. You know, I kind of like Brown's catch-and-shoot game a little bit better there, but, uh, you know, definitely a makeable shot there. Good spin. It's no roll there, which is fine. You know, a little brush screen. Defense is going to be kind of square again. So here's a solid spin. And again, that could have very well have been an and one. So we'll go past these free throws. Again, another high ball screen. And Brown at six foot five. I mean, that's another physical kid. Uh, good kind of straight line driver. Like I just mentioned, I do like his ability to catch and shoot. I think that's going to get more consistent, uh, especially as he kind of matures uh, and gets into college. But uh, he did a lot of the stuff out of ball screens in this game. That's nice. All right, that's a good, powerful take. Good job rejecting the screen here. Not really a ton of help. The only help there would be Cheney with that. Uh, kind of ball side leaving the corner, which generally isn't advised here. So Cerise, to me, has to be willing to step over here a little bit more and help, especially because he's going to swing step back to right where his help should be. You got to trust that Hornock here is going to split two. Dabs is outside of kind of most kids' shooting range there, so he could probably sink a little bit with that rotation on the weak side. Nice little swing stop. A step's going to end up with a jump stop here, but again, we see that kind of athleticism above the rim and that physicality on those drives 
if he gets guys with bumps getting to the basket, it's really uh, difficult for most kids. Solid defense there from Lappin. All right, that, that's really uh, the majority of what I want to look at clip-wise, you know, kind of just go over that, you know, a few minutes in the first half, a little bit of that second half, uh, and really kind of just look at the different things that both teams brought to the table. Again, this wasn't a player-specific or even a team-specific breakdown. I thought this was just a well-played game on both ends, obviously two Illinois teams. A uh, lot of really good talent throughout kind of both groups. I think GPA has really had a... I guess what I would consider a, a breakout spring, uh, only a program that's been around a couple years, but uh, I mean, th they've been terrific, not just at this level, but the you know 16U team has been very good as well. Uh, for all in, again, they were missing Connor Wooden in this game, which would have been a you know big difference maker from a spacing perspective, but uh, their defense has been impressive. The size, so Lathos, Brown, Dabs, I mean, they have guys that can really make plays in the paint and have you know, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, 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 type of size. And then when you have guards like Marta, you have guards like Lappin, who, again, I think is kind of before our eyes becoming a very, very promising scorer as well as kind of that playmaking and defense that I think has really separated him. Uh, Going to be a really productive piece again for uh, GBN. Um, then obviously, you know, Wooden wasn't there. But on both sides, there's really a lot of talent that I think – you know, represents Illinois well. You know, obviously this was a local tournament out in uh, Batavia uh, for prep hoops. But, you know, I think looking at both of these teams going into the summer, again, assuming they're coming back with the same groups, I, I think All In is a team who people probably won't want to see because there was some newer pieces that they had that they didn't have last season. Uh, like Lathos is new to All In this year. Uh I think once July hits, there's going to be a lot more comfort there. I think the same thing applies for this GPA team. Um, you know, you got players like Cheney, uh, who were, wasn't with them last year, who was a really, really big asset to add. Um, a lot of times those July periods for these teams that kind of have new pieces, you know, can really be a time where they separate. So uh, Division three coaches, I think a lot of NAI coaches um, – really are going to lock in on a number of players on these teams. I look at a player like Cerise. Uh, I really think that Division II program should give him a pretty hard look with how he scores a basketball, competitiveness, defense. Um, but you got a lot of D Division Three gems in this game. So uh, that's kind of you know what we wanted to look at today. Uh, as always, as we're going into June, you know these breakdowns may start going more into – Past AU stuff, uh, as we get into some of the bigger events, may start looking at how players are doing with their high school teams in June, uh, particularly in those bigger live period events.